Shavua Tov, Agotavoch, and welcome to our program. Shabbos morning, we started the Pazche of Vayetze, and Shabbos de Mincha, we read the, the beginning of the Pazche of Vayishlach. Last Wednesday and Thursday were two dates that appear on the, with importance on the calendar of Chabad. Wednesday was Teskislev, the birthday and the outside of the Mitalodeve, and Thursday was Yud Kislev, the Chagagula of the Mitalodeve. And there are several questions here. Um, the resting spot of the Mitalodeve is in Nezhin. Arguably, it should have been in Lubavitch. The Mitalodeve was the first Lodeve who moved into Lubavitch. As a matter of fact, he moved in on Chai Elul, Tov Kufain Gimel, the same year as the Stalkes, as the passing of the Alter Rebbe. The resting spot of the Semach Tzedek is in Lubavitch, the resting spot of the, of the, of the Rebbe Madash is in Lubavitch. Arguably, the resting spot of the Mitar Rebbe should have been in Lubavitch, but it's not, it's in Nezhin. Also, the Chag Ha-Geule of the Mitar Rebbe is not that known, it's not as known and as celebrated as the Chagagula of the Alta Rebbe on Yutis Kislev. The answer to both questions is the same. The Chagagula of the Mitala Rebbe took place Yud Kislev, Tov Kufezayin. That, after that, that, after Yud Kislev, that summer, the Mitala Rebbe got bad news that they are going to arrest him again. So the Mithal Rebbe left Lubavitch, and he went to the resting spot of the Alta Rebbe in Hadich, in the Ukraine. And he was there for a few months till after the Yomim Tevim. And Chsidim would tell the story that whenever he would, he would go to the, uh, to the Tzien of the Alta Rebbe, he would come back and uh, he would say something to the Chsidim. One of the times he said to the Chsidim, which means I have convinced my father, or I got my father to agree that he should release me from the rabbinate. Chsidim figured that maybe he wants to go to Eretz Yisroel, and they asked him, who are you going to leave us with? And he said, my son-in-law, the Menachem Mendel, but the Mitra Rebbe was not talking about Eretz Yisrael. He was talking of a different kind of release. One of the times he said that when my father was 54 years old, he was given two choices. Either Yisurim, agony, or leave this world. He chose Yisurim, agony. The arrest of the Alta Rebbe, Tovkuf Nuntes, was when the Alta Rebbe was 54 years old. Alta Rebbe was born Tovkuf Hei. From Tovkuf Hei to Tovkuf Nuntes, he had 54 years. And the Mithal Rebbe said that it seems that the second choice he left for him. Um, this is how it was f- until after Yomim Nedoim of the year Tovkuf and now they want to get back from Hadich to Lubavitch by, by horse and buggy and wagon. The road between Hadich and Lubavitch by horse and wagon takes you through Nezhin. The beginning of Kislev, they got to Nezhin. And then Mithal Rebbe took ill and they couldn't continue, so they stopped in Nezhin. And there were big Giluim um, dur- dur- during that period of time. Uh, sometimes they, the Mithal Rebbe was in a matzif where they didn't see any, any life in him, in Gashmias. And the doctor said, we'll show you something. They went over to him and they said they gave him permission to say chesidus. The moment they said that, he... He got up and his and his face became red and he started saying Chesidus. The night of Tes Kislev, he spoke greatly 
about the Jewish people and about the mitzvahs maisias that they do, how they are particular about doing mitzvahs maisias, about doing mitzvahs, and especially the mitzvah of tzedakah. And then he said, although in in the area of in Ish of, of Avas Yisrael, they could do better, but the mitzvahs maisias, they are very strong, and the very and mitzvah tzedakah, they are very strong. And he kept talking about the greatness of the Jewish people. And he kept asking if it's light. And then he said that they should put them on white garments. The Bishelebe writes about it extensively. They put them on white garments, and he looked like a Malach Hashem Tzvois. Then he said that he is going to be Megala to them. Um, some secrets. He's going to reveal some great secrets. As he said that, Chassidim was standing on, on a bench next to the bed of the Mita Lelebe. And of course, one of, one of the Chassidim lowered his head so he should be able to hear better. When he lowered his head, his hat fell off and landed on the bed of the Mita Lelebe. The Mita Lelebe took it as a sign that he should not reveal what, we, what he was going to reveal. Towards morning, he said Chsidus, and he said the Maimel Zechel of Tuvcho, and then he came to the words Kiimcho Mekel Chaim. Then he said Kiimcho Mekel Chaim Chaye Hachaim, and then was the Istalkus. The Tzemach Tzedek said that there wasn't such a Istalkus since the time of Rav Shimon ben Yechoi, and by Rav Shimon ben Yechoi it says. That he said the posuk kishom tzivo Hashem es abelocho, and the Baba said that the great light w- was not able to say the words kishom tzivo Hashem kishom tzivo Hashem es abelocho. The word chaim, and his words were silenced before he said chaim. The Mitzvah Rebbe said ki imcho mekeil chaim. He did say chaim, and after that he said chaye chaim. And when he and, and that night he said that he heard a voice from the heavens. What is such an Shoma doing in this world? This was the stalkus of the Mitzvah Lodeve. And this is why the high, the, the resting place of the Mitzvah Lodeve is in Nezhin and it's not in Lubavitch. And this is why we can understand that the Simche of, of, of his Chaga Geulo never took place. Why? The Chagagula was Tov Kuv Pezayan. So it should have been, it should, take, it, should, it should be, by next year it would be a, a great celebration. But by next year the Istalkis was a day before that. This is, this is the reason why the resting place of the Mithal Lodebe is in Nezhin. Concerning our Parsha, there was a question. Did our Rebbe, did he go on Shlichus? And you can understand from the question that he did go on Shlichus. And not only that, the Shlichus is paralleled to the Shlichus of Yanke Vavino in our Parsha. The Rebbe spoke about it extensively on Shabbos Pasha's Vayeshev, Tovshin Nun Beis, Nevertheless, everything that Rebbe said is concerning our Pasha because this is the parallel between the Shlichas of Yanke Vavinu and the Shlichas of the previous Rebbe. But first, our customary story, and I thank you for your patience. Heard the story from an individual who heard the story from the man with whom it happened, and he, he is a grandson on one of the great Litvisha Roshi Yeshiva. He got married, and for five years he didn't have children. He went to all the Litvisha Gdelim, and they gave him Brochets and Avtoches, promises for children, including the Chaim Kanievsky, and nothing happened. And he was desperate. And since he says he's a grandson of one of the great Roshi Yeshiva, everybody paid attention to him. But nothing happened, and it's five years since he's married, and he doesn't have any children, 
and he's desperate. He has a, Lub a Lubavitcher friend, and the friend says to him, why don't you write a letter to the Rebbe in Igris Kedish? So many people were helped. He says, what? I am going to write in Igris Kedish? I'm the grandson of one of the great Litva Shadoshi Yeshiva. But the son said to the, the friend said to him, listen, you got many brochas. So far you are not helped. So what do you have to lose? Write a letter to the Rebbe. We'll put it in Nigris Kedish and see what the Rebbe answers. After a while, he convinced him. He says he has nothing to lose. He doesn't have children. So he wrote a letter from, to the Rebbe. He signed the letter. He didn't know how the meaning is to write. He signed Shmei V'Shem Oviv, his, his name and his father's name. And they put it into Igris Kedish. The fellow brought him four volume of Zivigris Kedish. He chose one of them. He put in the letter. He opens up Igris Kedish. And number one, the Rebbe says that it's the Minhig to give your name and your mother's name. Shmei V'Shem Ime. He gave his name and his father's name, like an Aliyah. He didn't know. So the Rebbe writes to him that the Minhig is that you put Shmei V'Shem Ime. After that, there is a paragraph there about the education of Jewish daughters. And after that, the Rebbe says that he should check the mezuzahs in his house. You saw the last paragraph about the mezuzahs in his house. He says, I'm not doing that. I just do it, did it not long ago. All the mezuzahs were kosher. I'm not checking the mezuzahs again. Again, his friend says to him, what do you, what do you, what do you have to lose? You want a bracha for children. This is what the Rebbe says. Check the mezuzahs. What can be? And after a while, he convinced him. And when he checked, he said to himself, he's going to check not only whether the mezuzahs are kosher, he's going to check maybe he missed one of the rooms in the house that should have had a mezuzah, and he missed it. Sure enough, he checked all the rooms in the house, and there was a storage room, a large storage room, large enough that it warrants a mezuzah, but he missed it. So now you put in a, 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 a mezuzah also on that, on, on, on that room. And then he tells the story. I heard the story from someone who heard it from him. He fixed the mezuzahs. Within two weeks, his wife conceived. Within two weeks, his wife conceived. And a little girl, as you could have guessed, as the Rebbe writes in his letter, a paragraph about the education of Jewish daughters. As mentioned, I heard the story from an individual who heard the story from this person who says that he's a, he's a grandson of one of the famous Litvische Rosh Yeshiva. Concerning the question, did the Rebbe go on Shlichus? And the answer is one great resounding yes. And the Rebbe um, speaks about it really extensively in Pasos by Yosef Tov Shinun Beis. And as mentioned, we're mentioning it here this week because the parallels are from our Pasha, Pasos by Yetzi. And in the Sikha of Yosef Nun Beis, the Rebbe says, that the previous Rebbe, Sholach L'Shom Shluchim Ibnei Beisi, that he sent there to Paris Shluchim from his household. The Rebbe was in Paris, we all know. The Nesia to Paris, we see it from letters, was that the previous Rebbe, he was in Germany, the previous Rebbe sent him to Paris. Now, some know that the Rebbe's going to Paris had to do with some studies in the academy. Now, studies in the academy, friends, are very expensive. There's a big tuition bill. The previous Rebbe paid for the tuition. The Rebbe himself did not want to continue the studies. The previous Rebbe told him he should go to Paris and to continue the studies. The Rebbe said that he already studied in Berlin. The previous Rebbe said you should study also in Paris, first in another school and then in the Sorbonne. 
And the previous Rebbe is the one who paid for the tuition and made all the arrangements. So the Rebbe writes in the Sikha, Sholach Lashom, that he sent their Shluchim Mibnei Beisei. What's the parallel to Yankiv Avinu? Yitzchok sent Yankiv, Yishlach Yitzchok as Yankiv. Who did Yitzchok send on the Shlichas? Not someone that he was that he was able to find. He sent his son. Parallel to that, the previous Rebbe sent his daughter and his son-in-law. Not, not only that, we find in our parasha, in love and godity. I lived with love and however, v'tayag mitzvah shomalti. So the Rebbe here says, and what did they do in France? They did their work, they learned Nigla, and they learned Pnimius Atela. Again, another parallel, another parallel between Paris and 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 and, and, and where Yanke Bavina was and Cholon. Moreover, we already said that the shlichas of Yankev was by Yitzchok. So the Rebbe said Yitzchok is the previous Rebbe, the Yitzchok of our generation. Yankev is the perpetual Yankev, the Nosi of Beis Yankev, of Gilas Yankev, of Altido of the Yankev. And in this case, the previous Rebbe, the Yitzchok of the generation, sent the Rebbe. Where did he send them to? To Paris. Where is the parallel to Yanke Vavinu? The parallel to Yanke Vavinu is Yanke Vavinu was sent to Cholon. Cholon is the wrath of the world. And it doesn't say Le Cholon, it says Cholon, or into the wrath of the world. Paris is that wrath of the world. The Rebbe says, as Moke Machtachten Beyesel, that Paris was the most decadent place, the lowest place in the world. Parallel to Cholon, the most difficult place in the world, Chalein Af Shalelum. And not, not only that, talking about him, Lovon Galti, how they did their work there, the Rebbe said that the Ovdo Avi Dosom, Belimud Nigla, the Tedo Pnimis, a Tedo, the Lord Nigla and Chsidus, the Dafke Metech Yerushomayim Vihidud. And specifically through Yerushomayim and Hidud. Hidud means great enhancement of the mitzvahs. Exactly like the story with Yanke Vavinu. And there, and, and there, the Rebbe prepared many things for print and, and so on that went through the Rebbe. The, the Rebbe also says that they were in Paris, Bikvius Ubis Yashvus. This was not a fleeting shlichus. Just like Yanke Vavinu stayed with Lovon 20 years. In our parasha, the previous the Rebbe stayed eight, nine years. In other words, they were there be siyashvus. And the Rebbe says there's a big difference between the bilul and, and the zichuch. How how you refine a place when you come there periodically? You can come to a place from time to time. You stay for a day. You stay for two days. You stay for a week. You leave. You come back for a few weeks. You go and you come. That was not the, the case with, with with Paris. They were sitting there be siyashvus. In a, in, 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 in a way that they took up residence in Paris for so many years. And the clincher. What's the greatest blocker that Yanke Vavinu got? The answer is again, it's in our parsha. The greatest blocker that Yanke Vavinu got is the blocker of Ufalatsto. Now you're going to say, how do you know that this was the greatest blocker? Yanke Vavinu got so many blockers. The answer is that. On, on the block of Ufalatsto, it says, Nachlob It's something without boundaries. Ufalatsto means Yomo. How far? How far, Yomo? As far as you go, no boundaries. In other words, Ufalatsto means you spread out east and west and north and south. How far east? As much as possible. How far west? As much as possible. Without boundaries, Nachlob Limetzodim. That's what Yankee Vavinu got in our posture when he actually left for Shlichus, as we find it in the beginning of the Pasha of Ayatzi. And the Rebbe got a similar broker, the two for Atzto. 
What's the symbol of Belokha Tuhu for Lotzno? That he got Tzolfas, he was able to refine Tzolfas, and Tzolfas is Asius Palatzto, the same letters as Palatzto. So the Rebbe says, we see here another another parallel. Yankov Avina got the Belokha of Palatzto. The Rebbe, in our generation, got the, Rebbe, got the Belokha of Palatzto, Tzolfas, Asius Palatzto. And more than that, and here the Rebbe is really revealing to us, why was there a need for the Rebbe to go to France? Because the Rebbe says here that in order to refine the most decadent place in the world, the lowest place in the world, you need the etzim, the essence, not the espashtas. The espashtas is the extension. You need the essence. And, it, and it's only the power of the essence that has that kind of power to refine the most difficult place in the world. And it says every place that etzem, essence, that's a Rebbe. His pastors could be a chosid. Etzem is a Rebbe. And that's exactly what happened in Paris, in France. And through that, the Rebbe got the same block as Yankee Bovinu, who falats to yom of a kedem of a tzofin of a negbo, and Palazzo is Asius Tzolfas. So therefore, the Rebbe himself is not only the Mishaleach, but before that he was a Shaliach of the previous Rebbe. And now he's the Mishaleach, and he's sending all Jews, not only Chsidim and not only those who are designated officially as Shaluchim, but all Jews are Shaluchim, the Rebbe says, of the previous Rebbe for three things. Number one, for Afotas Atele Vayadus, to spread Tele and Yiddishkeit. Number two, Afotas Amayon is Chutzel, to spread the wealth springs of the Baal Shem Tev outwardly. And number three, to bring Mashiach. In short, every Jew is a Shliach to bring Mashiach. Clear, clear, every single Jew, including everyone, excluding no one. And this is our mission. Where the last generation of Gaulus, the first generation of Geula, and there are little Pachim Ketanim, small little Pachim, small little vessels that we still have to refine. And this is our obligation, and in Miyat Hashem we will meet that obligation, and we will prepare ourselves and our part in this world, will make this world a better place, and prepare this world for the coming of Mashiach. Gizun Tehit Umfelelechahit. Ubagolo di dan uve simcho of tuv livov uve teva nile ve anigle ulamato mea solot fochim uve chesed uve lachamim ve teikef umiyad mamesh.